Hello and welcome back to another video from my series Quick Thoughts On, in which I always talk about different episodes from the rich Star Trek universe. Today is Monday, which means that this video will be dedicated to the next episode of Star Trek Discovery, and as always, there will be very little spoilers. The episode which premiered today, or yesterday for those of you who watch it in the USA on CBS All Access, is episode number 12 and it's called vaulting ambition, apparently. If you're watching these videos every Monday, you probably know that I wasn't a big fan of the original couple of episodes. I would even say that I hated the first two episodes, the so-called pilot. Then the next episodes get better and better, and I feel safe to say now that I actually liked the previous, like, three or four episodes. So I was really looking forward to this episode, and then I've seen it. What can I say about it? Well, after the first 20 minutes or so, I opened Solitaire on my secondary monitor. This episode is boring. Most of the time is spent with characters talking about things that we already know. Last year everybody knew that Tyler is Vogue, but no, the producers think that the audience is stupid, so they have to spell it out for us. Uh, we have seen flashbacks of Vogue uh, being transformed into a human in multiple episodes, and then in the previous episode Tyler himself had to say out loud that he's Vogue. So what do they talk about now? Yes, they are still trying to find out if he's a Klingon. Because the flashbacks were not enough, his own admission wasn't enough, it now has to be confirmed by the Klingon woman. Why? We get it, he's a Klingon. We got it before Christmas. Can't you just move along? I mean, we also now know what happened to Stamets, uh, not just in this episode, but during the whole series so far. His consciousness is now trapped inside the network, uh, where he meets the Mirror Universe Stamets, who is also trapped in the network, so we finally get an explanation for his actions. All of the times he was strange for a few moments, that was the Mirror Universe Stamets trying to come in him. Okay, that sounded dirty, um, the Mirror Universe Stamets tried to use his body, that sounds better. But again, we got it, so why does this subplot take forever to end? Also, why is this actually a subplot? If this was done in a 30 second scene, uh, the impact would be exactly the same. Well, at least he gets the chance to say goodbye to his dead love, the doctor whose name I still don't know. Today I finally found out that his first name is Hugh. So again, this scene was probably meant to be very emotional, but I personally couldn't get interested in a person I don't like very much talking to a hallucination of a person I don't care about. I mean, his death scene was pretty funny and now I'm supposed to feel sorry for him. Why? Come on, the doctor is just like Tasha Yar from TNG, a completely useless character which got interesting after she was killed. There is a third plotline where Burnham and Lorca go to see the Emperor. Also, what's with all the language used? First we got a woman named Michael. I mean, why couldn't she be called Michelle? But now that I get used to it, uh, they have a woman with the title Emperor. Again, why is she not the Empress but the Emperor? While this might sound like a completely stupid and useless complaint, especially if you're a native English speaker, but for me it's uh, very confusing. I mean, in our language we have male and female forms of words which are used as personal names or titles or job descriptions, and that feels so completely unnatural. I checked a few online forums before the series started, and I'm definitely not the only person who is confused by that. Many people from countries with similar languages or similar language structures have expressed similar problems, so at least I'm not the only crazy one. I originally thought that this plotline will also be just boring people talking about stuff I don't care about, but I must say that the final 10 minutes or so were much, much better. I mean, something finally started to happen. And and then the story ended. Well, I don't want to spoil the ending to those of you who plan to watch this episode later this week, so I'm just going to say that there is a pretty big twist, and it's a twist I haven't expected to see, but some people on the internet have claimed that already last year, and I'm actually glad for this twist because suddenly many of tiny little short segments in previous 10 episodes start to make sense. 
I mean, great. I love the fact that this show still can pleasantly surprise me. Now, the rating. As I said before, the majority of this episode contains people speaking about things we already know. However, during the last couple of minutes, the episode drastically improves. I would say that the writers are really great at writing action, but they are not very good at writing characters. Because I hated the beginning of this episode and loved the ending of this episode, I think it's fair for me to give this an average rating. On my scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is absolute garbage, 5 is average and 10 is a masterpiece, I would give this episode 5 out of 10. It's average even by discovery standards. So thanks a lot for watching, if you like this video hit that thumbs up button, or if you're Tony don't forget to hit that thumbs down button and write down how much I suck. If you enjoyed this, this short little ramblings and have some free time, feel free to watch any of my previous videos, you should see some links on screen right now. So thank you very much for watching and see you in a few days, bye.